As a beginner gardener, you may be intimidated by the thought of saving seed, but it is such a easier than you think skill and critically important because it allows you to maintain control of your food source and what you get to plant out each season. We're gonna be talking today about why it's so important, how to identify when the seed is ready to save, as well as how to go about doing it. Yes, and I'd like to add in as when I was a beginner gardener, I was very intimidated by saving seeds and it probably took me a few years before I ever started doing it, but then I realized how easy it is. And as far as you getting your free seed pack, with that one seed pack, you can turn that into dozens or hundreds of seeds pa seed packs and you don't need another one from us if you learn this basic skill of how to save seeds. So what you're seeing right now is sort of the end stage of the garden. Here in Florida, it's mid-April, which is kind of the equivalent of the end of the summer in the northern climate. So we're past like having tons to eat and we're actually in the more of the seed saving stage. And so what I'm really excited about is we have seeds in multiple different stages that we're gonna be able to show you today. So when you are letting things go to seed, it's the end of season, a lot of people have concerns that they, they wanna stop it. And it's just not part of the natural process. Once things decide to go to seed, whether it be from temperature cues, daylight, um, as the days start to shorten, it cues the plants in like, hey, we need to reproduce. There's not much we can do to slow that process down. And we don't really want to because we need to save some seed. So as we go through this process, different plants are gonna bolt um, or go to seed at different times. Uh, so identifying when it's time to save that seed is important. If you harvest it too early, the seed may not be viable. And if you wait too long, it may do what's called self-seeding, which just means sending out a lot of volunteers. Not the worst thing in the world, but not as much um, in control of how you yes. save those seeds. Either, either self-seeding can be wonderful or keeping a little more controlled in order to harvest. Now, one quick question. With a lot of these plants, if they're starting to bolt just a little bit, you can be pruning that back to continue flushing out greens, right? So it depends on the plant. Um, so a lot of our herbs and stuff can take pruning. So if we wanna buy a little time with some of our basils and such, you can prune those back and it will extend your harvest season. Um, but certain things like the radish, for example, or um, even your mustards, when, when things bolt and go to seed, it completely changes the flavor profile of the plant. So you're going to find that they don't taste quite as good. They usually tend, especially with the leafy greens, to get a lot more bitter, the leaves get tougher. Um, with the root vegetables like um, radish, it's going to make the root, which is what we would harvest, a lot harder and woodier. Um, so it's just not as, as appetizing. So once they're starting to bolt, it's time to start saving seeds. So should we start with this beautiful radish right here? Yeah. So when you have a a plant that's bolted, the first thing you're going to see is not the seeds, it's going to be the flowers. Um, all of these are going to pollinate themselves. You don't have to be concerned about trying to cross pollinate or do anything like that. Um, sometimes when you first start searching and Googling about seed saving, it gets a little bit like next level or, or extra steps that aren't yes. actually necessary. Um, so just letting nature do its thing. Yes. At this point, these leaves um, or these flowers are being pollinated by bees. And when that happens, uh, they will eventually start forming the seed pods, which you can see just starting to form along here. Yeah, we have the flower, we, well, we have the bud, then the flower, then we have the very small seeds just getting started, and then the larger seed pods. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of the early stage really early stage here right yeah this is the very beginning and it kind of does show you as a like a walkthrough um, so this is leave it be we are doing nothing with this plant at this point there's no viable seed to save um, we're going to be looking for nice thick fat seed pods as well as a brown color to the seed pod before we're going to consider saving seed from it yeah and before we move on to that actually we have this radish here as well which is which is probably like a week or two behind, what would you say from here to here? I'd say at least two weeks. Two weeks. Mm -hmm. So you can see this is in still a little bit more of the bolting stage. It's not leggy yet. The flowers are just starting to come out. And, um, you know, I'll still eat 
it's definitely a much rougher green, mm -hmm. but for me, um, I'd still be cooking these up and everything, but this is definitely on to the seed saving stage. One of the fun things that I always like to do, and especially when you're late in season and just trying to get the last of it out of it, um, these flowers are all edible um, and they make a beautiful, mm. fun addition to your salad. So <laughs> they taste just like the um, plant itself. So if you're eating a radish, it's going to have a, a zip like a radish flavor um, with the kales the same way. So um, it's it's just a fun, flavorful addition. Um, you can use them as garnish in your salads or on your plate, or you can even, uh, my daughter will pick like entire flower salads in her palm and just like, it's nice. just a fun way to involve the kids in the garden. And if you hear Patrick laughing behind the camera, it's all good. That's Patrick and Victoria. Oh, there's a, a, a lady, lady beetle. Mm -hmm. Ladybug. Yeah, they're back there enjoying the garden with us. <laughs> so, um, and I just want to say, like, how many seeds, so in your, in your free seed pack, you get about 20, is it 50 radish seeds? How many seeds do you think you'd get from this one plant? So you're probably looking at 500, if not better, if you were to allow this fully to mature. And 500. This is kind of like um, garden economics, right? So we don't have to let all of our our plants go to seed, but it is important to save maybe you know an eighth. So if you plant out 10 radishes, eat eight of them for you, but leave two to save seed from. You always wanna leave at least two, if not more of plants. It allows for better cross pollination. You'll get better seed. It also allows genetic mixing so that you don't end up with something over time um, showing up in your plants. Yeah. Um, but that is important to think of. You're not having to sacrifice much to be able to save an insane You're not sacrificing of seeds. anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some people could look at it as like, well, I could have eaten that radish, but saving that one radish can turn into 500 radishes for you and your community. So I'm incredibly excited about seed saving. I mean, receiving this pack, you know, it's called the power of the seed pack because with this one pack, you can grow a lot of food. But if you get into seed saving, we're talking about you being able to start giving packs to people all throughout your community. So it's super exciting. So let's see. Um, let's see some other plants that are in the seed in the seed uh, stage. So over here is cilantro, and a lot of times we don't connect the dots, um, especially with our herbs, as far as fresh herbs and seeds. So a lot of people will use coriander. That's cilantro seed. They're the same plant. It's just eating the seed, which is ground up, or eating the herb, which is fresh. Um, so this is gonna look a little bit different when it bolts or goes to seed. Um, so you're gonna have not as much leggy growth. Um, it's gonna stay a little bit more compact. They stay kind of in place, um, but the leaves get really frilly. I use the leaves as an indicator that there is a change in bolting, because sometimes, especially when we're new to gardening, we may not know if that's like a natural part of it or whatnot. Um, so typically when plants go to seed, they're going to change their leaf shape a mm. lot. Um, yeah, you've got these tiny little leaves here on the radish, for yeah, example. Yeah, which is completely different from this one here. Yes. Um, and the same goes here. So this is our normal cilantro leaf, a little yellow, but, um, and then this is what it looks like when it is in seed or yep. in, in bolting. So completely different look to it. Um, and the same goes. So regardless of where the, le uh, the, the plant's um, seed pods are forming or the shape of those seeds, anything in this green stage is not ready yet. We need to wait for it to start to turn brown before we're looking at saving seeds. Yes. So, um, and cilantro is in the beneficial insect attractant mix. So you'll generally only get a, one or a couple cilantro seeds, um, but that's the key, let that go to seed. They're in the beneficial insect attracting mix because they do attract insects. So you actually want to let those go to flower and go to seed, harvest them, and then next year you can have a lot of cilantro. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk a little bit about saving seeds from the basil. And in the basil mix, you've got up to five different basils. You've got your standard Italian, you've got Thai, you've got holy basil, you've got a lemon basil, and then you've got the red Reuben. And of those, 
Wh which is, would you say, the hardest? They're not all the same for saving seeds, right? Yeah, so ba there are all of these, all, we say it is easy to save seed, and it is, um, but there are stuff that's easier to save seed from than not. So things like arugula and radish, super, super easy. If you're questioning your abilities, start there. If you're um, a little bit more confident or just willing to play and explore and have fun, then something like basil is a good like halfway point. Um, you're gonna be able to save seed. It's a little bit more nuanced as far as when you're catching it at just the right save, uh, stage, if you're wanting to take the seed inside with you. Um, but that's an important point. Just to say, in the seed saving guide, we have a list and it tells you exactly which seeds are the easiest, more middle level, and the hardest. So you can see which seed you want to try saving and which not. Yep, so if you're questioning if you're going to be able to pull it off, um, one option is to just let nature take its course. I am a, I'm a huge believer in a soil seed bank, which basically means allowing the plants to self seed. So the soil seed bank is basically just allowing the plant to take its natural course. So instead of us trying to kind of control the situation and catch it at just the right point and take the seeds inside to save to replant the next year. If you're guessing when it's ready, just let it go. Let them flower, let them produce their seed pods and let it distribute those seeds as it sees fit. Yes, so the term for that is a self-seeding annual. And well, some, some annuals, just are self-seeding. It's like, you can't stop it. They're gonna keep coming back year after year, and that can be an incredible thing. So here in Albert's yard, he has a plant called Ethiopian kale. It's growing everywhere. And uh, arugula, also a really wonderful self-seeding annual. So you want that. I mean, just let these seeds go, let them burst, and then you'll get to know these plants and then just have spots where they're coming up and you say, hey, I didn't have to do any work the earth did the seed saving for me and the planting and then you get to harvest. Yeah, I have I have arugula, for example, that I planted, I don't know, three or four years ago in the garden and I don't save the seed from it. I just let it do its thing and it moved itself a bed over and I didn't mind where it chose in the bed. So I just let the plants that popped up there do its thing and then the ones that were in the walkway, I just pulled up and ate. Um, and I haven't planted it in three or four years. So I guess what allow, when you allow things to self-seed, it's a little unruly or like not less planned or formal, but yeah. it's, it's way less work. Um, yeah, it's and it's just as effective. Volunteers yeah. is another name if you ever hear that. Volunteers, they've volunteered themselves. So basil, here we have, um, we have your standard Italian basil, which Honestly, these plants were not super successful with because of the downy mildew, but I'd say, do you think these will still be able to get seeds out of them? Mm -hmm. So they weren't super successful in that regard, but save seeds and next year, hopefully they'll be really successful. So um, what do you want to say about uh, the basil? So if you're trying to maintain your basil throughout the season, let's say it's halfway through your growing season and it starts to bolt, um, pruning can help. We're gonna go over how to prune and when to prune and all that in a different video. But um, once you are ready for it to do its thing, um, you would just simply stop pruning out the flowers. And at that point, it's going to go through its natural evolution. Now, basil is in the list as far as like what's easiest to save and what's not Learning. as easy to save. Um, the the basil's halfway in there because as it as it's flowering at the top it's also got viable seed at the bottom and it's not as like obviously um, brown as the thick pods so this is maybe a little bit early but as soon as it gets the lightest yellow to it that means it's already put out its seeds so they're really good volunteers um, that one's maybe just a touch, touch early. I don't know that I see any that have opened yet, yeah. but so the they're going to be basil, harder to identify. The holy basil is the one that is um, going to be a really prolific self-seeding annual in a lot of gardens. Um, but the Genovese basil is one that's easier to actually harvest, save and harvest the seeds, would you say? I would say they probably all are close to oh, the same okay. as far as that. Um, it just depends on your climate and everything as to what's gonna perform best. Um, holy basil comes from more of a t uh, t uh, warmer climate. Yeah. 
um, a little bit more drier. The Genovese um, is going to tolerate a little bit cooler temperatures. Um, so it just depends on where you are as to what's going to do best, which is kind of a beautiful thing yes. about how you send out multiple varieties yes. because out of the five, maybe four rocked it in your garden um, and one didn't, and that's okay. Yeah, that's the idea of having five different types of basil in your pack is that some we're going to do well and some aren't, and it creates that diversity. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit about basil, and we have to mention the weeds a little bit. This here is one of my favorite weeds. And this is? Purslane. This was Gandhi's favorite vegetable. And not only is it wonderful for eating, but it produces a lot of seeds. This is one of the few ones that actually produces a seed even while the pod is still green. And it's got all these black, <clears throat> black seeds inside of it. Uh, so, wow, just in this one seed pod, there's enough, so there's enough seed right here. There's probably a hundred seeds right there, enough to start a small purslane garden. And you can also eat these seeds, the whole plant I just said. Purslane is the highest in omega-3 fatty acids out of the plant kingdom. So, um, it's really good nutritional, healthy fats so to there's, incorporate. And there's no purslane in your seed pack? but they'll probably be purslane in your garden. <laughs> um, so we want to show a little bit of arugula. I'll just go ahead and harvest this. Here is sort of the, this is the next stage beyond the radish. This is arugula. You can see the white flowers on top. And with this, you can actually see how the pods have gone from that smooth to actually being able to see, basically it looks like an outline of the seeds in the pod. Mm -hmm. This is probably a week out from your final stage, which is when you're gonna be saving it from. So the pods are gonna start to bulge. Um, and then once they turn brown, you're good to go and it's time to start saving seed. If we save it at this green stage, the seeds may, may germinate, but it's very likely that none of the seeds are viable at that point. So um, inside of here, you can see that the seeds are still green. You wanna wait till those seeds have gone from green to brown, or to, to dry and whatever color their final stage is, brown, black, mm -hmm. some are reddish. Um, so again, this arugula is about a week off from being brown and ready to harvest. This is the next stage that we're looking for, and this is like perfect seed saving uh, time frame. The pods are brown, they're brittle, so they're, they break apart easily if we were to do that. Um, and the whole stem is at that stage. Um, in the very beginning, you might have, you know, three or four that started to turn, but the rest are still green. Um, so at this point, I would say this is perfect seed saving. Um, you can even tell if you're uncertain, you can always break open a pod and check the seed color. And it is a nice, it's a nice red color. So this is, this is ready to go. And the seeds are just falling right out, just falling right out of the pod. So that's looking beautiful. So just from a few seed pods of one plant, there's more, uh, uh, there's more seeds than you get in your pack just from a few pods. And we're going to show you now how to process this and how to save them for next year. But before doing that, I'm just going to scatter these out into the garden and we'll see if we're having more arugula coming back from that. Probably will. Mm -hmm. It's just that easy. Here I have some arugula actually i gotta be honest this is actually ethiopian <laughs> kale but the seeds are the same you work with them the same uh, most of the brassicas are the same but from the seed pack if you were working with your arugula this would be the exact same way so these were uh drying uh these were they could be harvested just like this or they could have been harvested and let to dry for a little while um, but you can you can hear they're nice and crispy. The seeds are actually falling right off into there And so what I'm doing is I'm just gonna crush up these pods I'm just trying to crush up Real well so that I can uh, get the seeds to pop out of the pods and One thing I'll say is you don't have to get them all They're so abundant and with some of these self seeding ones you can just take this and then just wander around the yard and scat scatter it around the yard. So for now, I'm just gonna do that. And then at the bottom of this, 
you'll see we've got uh, we've got the pods, which are called chaff, and then we've got the seeds in there. So a shallow bowl is going to be ideal if you want to be like um, if you want to be winnowing. But with this, I can just basically take the chaff off the top. I kind of think of it like um, popcorn. If you want to get the kernels and they settle to the bottom and it's all mixed together. So I always toss the bowl of popcorn. You can toss the bowl of seeds to get it to separate yes. the light from the heavy. And shallow trays are going to be key for that. So I've just removed most of the chaff and now I'm going to actually blow this lighter stuff. And there's still a little bit more big stuff. So you can see there's still a little more chaff in there. That's fine. You could easily store it for a year with that chaff. But ideally for longer term storage, you do want to remove that because it could hold on to moisture and there could be insects. Now they do have a lot of equipment that you can purchase for something like this. You can do screens, you can have fans, you can have different sieves where they sort out the different size seeds. Um, but for most home scale or small scale gardening, this will do the trick. You don't have to spend the money on anything. There you go. And uh, imagine how much seeds you get from your one little pack of arugula easily you can be getting this amount of seeds from one arugula plant or one mustard plant. So that one plant from that one pack. So from this one pack, if you save one or two plants, you can easily get this amount of seeds. This really shows that the absolute value in saving some of your seeds because you can turn your one pack into like dozens hundreds of packs for future years and for years to come this is something that allows you to maintain this gift of the seed pack as long as you choose to there's no outside resources or inputs needed this is something anybody can do and achieve now a lot of people when it comes to seed saving they worry about like getting the exact same variety for future years uh, cross-pollination separation the good news is as a beginner seed saver, you don't have to worry about any of that. You might get a slightly different variety next year, but you're gonna get dill, you're gonna get radishes, you're gonna get turnips. They're just gonna be a little different. So you don't have to worry about that. The easiest ones to start with, if you just wanna start with the easy ones, are arugula, mustard, radish, turnip, dill, and cilantro. I would say out of this pack, those are the easiest ones. On the other side of things, carrots are very nearly impossible um, for a beginner gardener. It's totally doable, but for all intents and purposes, I would say just let that one alone um, and not bother with that quite yet. Um, but also too, the ones that can be a little tricky are lemon balm, oregano, and even kale. Um, kale needs some different inputs and cycles and it's just not the easiest to save seed on a, on a beginner level. Um, so those are probably the ones where you might not bother focusing this first year, maybe reserve a few extra seeds from the pack for the following year's planting until you feel a little bit more comfortable moving forward with things. And as far as storage is concerned, I already mentioned dry is key, key. But aside from that, you want things to be in general, cool and dark as well. Um, so you don't, there are fancy ways to do this, but literally underneath your bed, um, on the top shelf of your closets, somewhere that's naturally going to be dark, naturally going to be temperature controlled in your home, you know, a garage, not a good place. They get super hot. Um, sh garden sheds, although it kind of sort of makes sense in your head, not a good spot. And another thing that's really common is having them in either the fridge or the freezer. And while it is temperature controlled and colder does te technically extend the shelf life, it's also an incredibly humid and moist environment. So unless you have those seeds going into a sealed jar, completely dried, 
um, potentially with some sort of like dehumidifier packs or something like that, I would not advise that unless you are sure that that container is fully sealed. Yeah, and all of these are gonna store for a good year just in your house, like like Elise said, in your pantry or uh, in your you know dresser drawer. And most of them will store for a few years. So there's really no need to put them into the fridge or the freezer. That's really more like seed banking, you yeah. know, keeping stuff for the long term. But for next year and the year after, it's definitely not needed. Now, if you want more details on this, like which ones are the easiest, how to store them, um, you know, some more tips, uh, the seed saving guide is gonna have all that information for you. And we are incredibly happy and excited to be providing these packs to you. It brings us an incredible amount of joy, but I think it would bring a lot more joy if next year you didn't need us. <laughs> <laughs> if next year you uh, mostly grew from the seeds you saved. And of course, if you start to exchange seeds with others in your community, you start to use the seed libraries, you start to connect with local seed growers, you use the Facebook group uh, to exchange seeds with others. Um, you know, eventually we would like to not send seeds in the mail at all anymore because you all have just become your own little hubs all over the country. So anything last you want to say? It's all about building the community and thinking about the future. Yes, uh, that is really the true solution to all this. The solution is not which plants, it's not the seeds, it's the community. Building your community of people but also your community of plant and animal relatives. And that means not just working with the 20 seeds in this pack, but eventually starting to explore and expand and try and just experiment and have fun with it and give yourself grace. Yes. So yeah, start small. This pack is a great way to start small, but in years ahead, you'll be growing maybe even a couple hundred different plant friends. 